Frontier Town, the saga of the Roaring West. Frontier Town. El Paso, Cheyenne, Calgary, Tombstone. Frontier Town. Here is the adventurous story of the early West, the tamed and the untamed, from the Pecos to Powder River, Dodge City to Poker Flat. These are the towns they fought to live in and lived to fight for, teeming crucibles of pioneer freedom. Frontier Town! If you're ever out on the frontier and happen to need a frontier town lawyer, well, my name's Chad Remington and the frontier town Dos Rios. Not that I haven't got a few clients. I have. But after my last experience, what I'm looking for right now is a little more restful case. To tell the truth, and even a frontier town lawyer is expected to do that, it all started when I was out looking for a little rest and relaxation. With the buffalo and elk on the move, I gathered up Cherokee O'Bannon, who owns the Dos Rios livery stable now that he has forsaken the patent medicine game. And together we set out for the Tierra Piedra country, buffalo guns thonged to our pommels and rifles slapping easily in our saddle boots. We were loping along high up in the tangled crags and everything was serene, or serene was the way it looked. Counselor? I say, Chad, what are you looking so happy about? Because, Cherokee, up here with no troubles to bother me, I feel happy. What are you looking so glum about? Well, not to put too fine a point on the matter, my boy. Just because up here in this Satan-forsaken barren wilderness, we're two days' ride from the nearest establishment which purveys nectar. Nectar spelled W-H-I-S-K-E-Y, whiskey. Cherokee, for a man who made his dubious living by using his wits, you certainly are lacking in resourcefulness. Resourcefulness? Now, how could resourcefulness get me even two fingers of liquid mine up here? You see what's growing all around us, don't you? Well, my palate may be decomposing for the lack of lubrication, but my optics are sharp as ever. Naturally, I see what's growing all around us. Mesquite. What's there about mesquite to salve my thirst? Don't you know what the Indians make from mesquite? A delightful witch's brew known as mescal. Ah, uh, pox on mescal. Two ounces of that stuff and a man might end up married. <laughs> Well, you're up in Indian country now, Cherokee. And if you're thirsty enough, you'll do as the Indians do, drink mescal. Do you really think I could try cooking some up when we make camp tonight? I got that Dutch oven in my saddle roll and... Say, look there, Chad. Isn't that a flock of sheep on the move just down below us? Yeah. Looks like they're being trailed, too. Must be between 700 and 1,000 sheep in that flock. <laughs> That's another example of what mescal will do to you. Now, what's mescal got to do with trailing a flock of sheep? Well, anybody who'd trail a lizard through this country must have been drinking mescal. I can't disagree with you there, O'Bannon. This isn't even fit for mountain sheep. And there seems to be only three people tending the... Uh-oh. Uh-oh what? Now what's the matter? Quick, look across the other side of this valley, up by that chimney rock. Doesn't that look like a yellow shirt? A yellow... Billy Blue Blazes, Chad, you're 100% right. It's a yellow shirt, and that means Indians. It sure does mean Indians. Apaches. And unless I miss my guess, they're after those sheep. Well, there aren't enough of those redskins to risk a raid. Maybe not, but there are enough to be scouts. There, you see now, they're turning their ponies and heading north. Probably going to tell the main body of the raiders that they've located the flock. Well, even with this buffalo gun, I couldn't reach them from here, Chad. Well, the only thing we can do is ride down and warn those herders what we think they're in for. All right, Cherokee, knock on that piece of crow bait. This gravel's loose, it's a downhill ride, and we've really got to make tracks if we're going to get there in time. Up there, fella! Get to running! Ah!
Diego. Si, sí, Palara. I can see Pablo no longer. My brother's up ahead trying to turn the ship to the left. We do not wish to lose one ship before we deliver them to Fort Lincoln. Si, sí, Diego. To sell to government contractors what we've been working for for six years now. And we must not... Diego. Si, sí. what happened, Palara? What is it? Maybe I make a mistake. I do not think so. I saw a flash of yellow shirt and rocks up ahead. Yellow shirt? Sacre madre. Indians. Call Pablo. Quick. Pablo. Pablo. Pallada, he cannot hear this far. I shall ride up ahead and I will... Diego, it is too late. The Indians are all around us. Ah, Pilato, off your horse. The red devils shall not get our sheep without a fight. Quick, Diego. Two of them get behind us. Then we take care of them first. Pilato, those two Indians, those white men, they come to help us, and they... <laughs> Hand me a few more of those stones, Cherokee. Here you are, Chad. I'm sorry that we didn't have something more to dig with than our hands, Senor Velicheta. It does not make much difference, Senor Remington. These graves are temporary only. If we ever get a ship to Fort Lincoln, Diego and Pablo shall have fine graves back home with marble headstones. You forgive my intruding in a time like this, Senora Valachita, but how is it that you're taking your sheep all the way to Fort Lincoln? My husband, Diego, had arranged to sell all the sheep to Senor Branquantro. Branquantro, eh? What is he now, a government contractor for beef cattle and sheep? See, si. he has contract for meat with the government. Ah, uh, that just gives the lie to the old adage about early to bed and early to rise and living an honest life. <laughs> government contractor. You already know this, Senor Cuantro? Like a book. About three years ago, he was down in our neck of the woods. But he sloped fast when we found out that he was peddling whiskey and rifles to the Indians. Even bad men, if he pay price for sheep. That is all I ask. Well, Senora Velcheta, since Cherokee and I are doing nothing in particular, I don't suppose you'd have any objections to our riding along with you and making sure that the sheep get through. Oh, no, Senor. You have no reason to be any more help to me. Already you drove off the Indians. And even though my husband and brother-in-law were killed, you saved the flock. Now, I'm not above taking credit, but we didn't drive off any Indians, Senora. But I saw you. When you and Senor Remington come up behind us. That was when Indians ride off. That's when the raiders rode off. I've got a pretty good nose for smell, Senora. And those men didn't smell like Indians. The men who raided you smelled mightily like two-legged polecats. White men. And if you don't object, Cherokee and I sure mean to find out. <laughs> Why don't a lot of you shut up? Only a bunch of halfwits would bungle a simple little job like that. Now, wait a minute, Brunk. We didn't do the bungling. You just didn't send enough men. What are you talking about, Schiller? There were eight of you, and only three of them herders, and the two men you say rode up. Yeah, but them Jaspers that rode up, rode up behind us. Ask Eddie. Ask anybody. Now, that's the truth, Brunk. Maybe if we'd seen them coming, it would have been different, but they caught us by surprise. And you can shut up too, Eddie. Well, yes, that's what I'm telling you. Talk. Talk, that's all I get. Well, if I'd have been along, we'd have had them sheep. Oh, sure, sure, if. Nobody stopped you from coming along, you know, and if you ask me... Eddie, you better be leaving. You're through. I'll say I'm through. For good this time. And the next time I send anybody out to get them sheep, I think I'll dress them up in dunce caps instead of, like, Apaches. Senor Remington? Yes, senora? You feel the air? Well, if I'm any judge of the weather, it feels and sounds as if a storm is coming up. Storm would certainly wreck everything up here in these mountains. There are two rivers to cross between here and Fort Lincoln, and a real storm could... Now what, Chad? Well, you're staring like Galileo with his first telescope. Hold it. Rain up. 
there is trouble, senor? You smelled something again? I don't know about smelling it, but I certainly see something. Look over there. Isn't that a man riding toward us? My Godfrey, it's an Apache. Well, look, he's wearing a yellow shirt. Perhaps he wears a yellow shirt, but that man riding saddle, he white man. It's a white man right enough, and he isn't just out for the exercise. He's riding straight for us. Howdy, friend. Something we can do for you? Oh, oh, oh. Ah, maybe so. First, I'd like to do something for you. Something for us, huh? Well, first, maybe you can explain what you're doing wearing an Apache shirt. I was one of the men who raided these sheep this morning. Why, you blast it, no good, unprincipled... Now, wait a minute, Cherokee. There must be a reason why he raided the sheep, and another reason why he rode out here in the middle of nowhere to tell us. Maybe you are the man who killed my Diego. Ma'am, any shooting I did was over your heads. You see, I thought I recognized you, Remington. Remington? Do I know you? You know my brother, Jimmy Bakewell. And it was you who got him paroled. And you must be... Let me see. Yes, you must be Eddie Blakewell. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Since I figure one good turn deserves another, well, I took my life in my hands and rode out to meet you. But why? What do you want to tell us? You know who engineered that raid this morning? Bron Quantro. Quantro? But he's the man who's supposed to buy these sheep. Sure, sure. He said he was going to buy them, but that ain't the way Quantro runs his business. You see, he arranges to buy cattle and sheep, providing they're delivered at Fort Lincoln. Yes. Then, by dressing his men up like Apaches, he gets the animals and the engines get the blame. But, but why you come to tell us? Why? I'll tell you why, ma'am. Because Bron Quantro is as cussed as they come. And for one, I've taken all the slapping around I'm going to take. I suppose now that he missed the sheep this morning, it's only made him more determined, huh? It sure has. When he comes out after him next time, he'll be bringing every man jack that works for him. Oh, more trouble, more trouble. I start to believe the whole thing is not worth it. I've never heard a bass talk that way before, Senora Velcheta. And certainly never an American. Now, how far behind us is Quantro and his gang, Eddie? Well... About an hour, an hour and a half at the most. Yeah, this is a fine hog-headed deal. I suppose this is the only trail to Fort Lincoln? The only trail, yeah. But you could get there driving these sheep across Diablo Basin. Diablo Basin? Oh, no. It is so hot there, and the sheep move so slow, we would die before we were one hour across. There's a river the other side of Diablo Basin, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, the big salamander. But you'd have to swim the sheep across, and that water's plenty high. Well, if this storm breaks, the water will be plenty higher. Just the same folks with Bron Quantro right on our heels. I'm going to try to get these sheep to Fort Lincoln if we have to drive them halfway around the world to get them there. Hey, wait a minute. Rain up. Oh, oh. Hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh. Uh, Schiller. Where in Parnation Thunder do you think they're driving them sheep? Looks from here as if they're heading into the Diablo Basin, Bronk. Into that furnace? You don't get to Fort Lincoln that way. Uh, you could if you went up through the painted rocks till you got to the big salamander, then swim them across. They couldn't swim that themselves, even without the sheep. Are you local? I'm not. But maybe they are. I wonder what made them change their minds and go that way. Yeah. Sounds like they knew we were behind them. By Blazer Schiller, I'll bet that's it. Eddie. Eddie Bakewell. Well, now I want two scalps hanging from my belt. Remington's and Eddie's. If we could get through them lava beds, we can probably head them off before they hit the river. That's tough going. I don't care how tough it is. Let's ride. We started out, I just wanted the sheep. Now it's Remington and Bakewell, too. By Jasper, if I have to follow him into prairie dog holes, I'm going to get them to if it's the last thing I do on this earth. We'll return to the second act of the trail drive, our exciting frontier town adventure, in just a few moments. <laughs>
And now, Frontier Town. Well, are you beginning to understand why I'm looking for a little quiet law business? I've had my back to the wall a few times in my young life, but never has my back been jammed against a series of walls. Bron Quantro and his little band of high-spirited gentlemen loaded down like an arsenal right behind us, 800 and some odd head of tired and frightened sheep ahead of us, a volcanic blast furnace known as Diablo Basin to the left of us, and the big salamander running brown and dirty over its banks, aided by the fury of a mountain storm to the right of us. But when you're boxed in on all four sides, there's not much you can do but plunge ahead. And in the case of Pallada Vilicheda, Cherokee O'Bannon, Eddie Bakewell, and myself, plunging ahead hits the nail right on the thumb. Because there was very little left for us to do but herd the flock of sheep up to the edge of the big salamander and get ready to plunge in. And that's a prospect I never want to face again as long as I live, if I live that long. Oh, Remington, even this seems a miracle, getting this far. But anyone who sees the river cannot need to know very much to realize these sheep, tired and weak from the drive, will never be able to swim across. Well, if I were a betting man, and I am, I'd give you ten to one the sheep can't make it. And uh, 20 to 1, I can. Cherokee, you've been around the frontier long enough to have learned that where there's water, there must be cottonwoods and willows. What a remarkable discovery, Professor. Go to the head of the class. Cottonwood and willows. Remington, what do you mean? You think maybe we can hide the shape on the trees? Well, because if you do... I Mark wish to goodness we could, Eddie. It would be a lot easier. But as long as I seem to be running a school here, do you remember what Noah did when he was confronted with rain? Well, and accustomed as I am to the perusal of religious literature... It so happens that I am well acquainted with old man Noah's resourcefulness. Because I was always interested in what a man would do when completely surrounded by <coughs> water. Hey, old Chad, you do not think we can build an ark like Noah? That's right, I don't. But I do believe that we could build a few rafts, lash them together, and pull the sheep to the other bank without losing even one kid. Rafts? What are they us? We have no tools. And even if we had the tools, we haven't the time. We've got a few tools that Cherokee and I pack for our hunting trip. And as far as time goes, well, we've got as much time at our disposal as the good Lord will allow. All right, come on, boys. We've got some hand axes and some rawhide, so let's be unpacking those tools and getting to work before Bron Quantro gets here and goes to work on us. I never would have believed it, Chad. Got about enough logs now for one raft. Save your breath, Eddie. Because if we don't get through with this job, and soon, Quantro may see that none of us has any breath left. <laughs> Even this rain, I'm as hot as a furnace. Three rafts already. Yep, and what you'd better do, Philander, is to start herding some of those sheep aboard a raft. You never can tell when we may have to leave sooner than we expected. What is it, Cherokee? What do you say to sheep that make them move? Well, you have to learn to talk their language, Cherokee. Their language? Sure. You've got to get behind them and say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Chad, if it weren't for you, we never would have had it. So, friend Joe, look there. Look, just coming up over the edge of the painted rock. Indians, Apache. Apache's nothing. That's Bron Quantro and his gang. And not only have we spotted them, but they've spotted us. Not only have they spotted us, but they're getting our range. That was my hand. All right, come on. Grab our horses and let's get aboard those rafts. Pallada, start moving those sheep. Handle right. Handle Come on, come on. Hey. Hey. Chad, Chad! Bronx coming down the other side. Well, you're wearing a gun, man. Don't leave our flank unprotected. <laughs> Thanks, Cherokee. I can see them good. Right over the side of this buffalo gun. All right, now, pull. Pull for the sandbank. Get them over there. Push. Oh, Lord of 
mighty Cherokee. I never thought we'd make it. Uh, I was just about able to pull myself up the bank, Eddie. For a few moments, I thought I was gone. Why are you just leave it to Chad? So for Joe, where is Chad? Well, he was right behind me on the last raft. If anything happens to him, up, Cherokee, isn't it him out there? Down below us in the river. Where? I don't see any... Sweet, merciful providence, it is Chad. Why, well, he's swimming his horse up to help Polita. He's got hold of her, but the weight's too much for him. Cherokee's not going to make it. Well, he's going to make it if I have anything to do with it. Say your prayers, Eddie, and keep me covered. Ah, you blame fool! You can't swim out, John! Well, I'll be hamstrung. Full of booze and with hardly a muscle in his body, and look at that O'Bannon swim. Hang on, Chad, I'm coming! Cherokee, look out! Look out with the horse! Poor fool, he's never gonna make it. There you are. I think we got most of the water out of you, Cherokee. Uh, I didn't want to have to die full of water. Oh, Senor O'Bannon, never. Never have I seen a man swim like you do so fast. Just like a fish. Well, Senor, any time I get into water, I just can't swim fast enough. <laughs> I just can't wait to get out of it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, it sure looks like Quantro gave up, all right. From the yelling I heard in the opposite bank, Chad, there was a couple of them ran of hands who felt your lead. Well, it's all right with me. And if I sound just a little bloodthirsty, I mean to. Thirty to four aren't very good odds. Well, senors, now that the storm is over, we had better move the sheep again. Yeah, yeah. And if we don't get out of here, Quantro might change his mind and get around behind us again. Oh, uh, how far would you say it is from where we are to Fort Lincoln, Eddie? Oh, about... Oh, about eight, nine miles. Well, the sun's coming out again, and that'll dry out our clothes while we're riding. So I say, let's get back on our horses and be off for Fort Lincoln. Whoa, whoa there, whoa! All right, you boys drop by tomorrow and I'll pay you off. All right, come on, Schiller. Hey, Brock, yeah? if you're going to your office, I'm going back over to my place and fix up my shoulder. It hurts like blazes. Yeah, Schiller, go ahead. And if I was you, I'd go someplace, too. I wouldn't want to show my face when Remington hits town. Like I'm that big a fool? I got some mighty important business to take care of up in Dakota. <laughs> like they'll be gone a couple of weeks. See you when I get back, Schiller. Sure, Brock. See you then. Yeah. Howdy, Bron. Hmm? Oh, it's you, Eddie. What are you doing hanging around my office? Waiting for you. You know something? I'm glad you're here. Gonna save me looking you up. Yeah? Did you run across Chad Remington after I threw you out this morning? Up in the Diablo Basin, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I seen him. And I told him what you were planning to do. And you know something else? All he lost was seven sheep crossing the big salamander. Yeah? How do you know what he lost? Chad told me. And if you're interested, he's standing right behind that closet door. Chad, here, of all the things you ever pulled, Quantro, trying to rustle those sheep from those poor Basques was about the lowest. What are you doing here, anyhow? Why are you always showing up someplace where you don't belong? Oh, but I do belong in Fort Lincoln. You see, I'm going to be the government star witness when they try you for murder. Chad, watch it! Run, Chad! If you try to pick up that gun, Quantro, I'm promising you this much. I'll jump you and bang your head until it goes clean through that floor. All right, Eddie, you get his gun. And then we'll take him over to the post guard house. Being a government contractor, Mr. Quantro's picked himself up a nice charge of a federal offense. <laughs> Senor Chad and Senor Cherokee, all the things I have in my heart to say to you, when I make them into little words, somehow they, they turn to a, a big lump in my throat. And 
Well, nothing comes out. Uh, senor, as an expert on human ailments, I diagnose your case as the very common sediment in the throat. Sediment in throat? Is that serious? <laughs> Pilata, believe me. The disease may not be serious, but I'm willing to bet that Cherokee's remedy will be. Oh, you have a remedy? Good. Ah, uh, madam, the first thing you'll have to do is rustle up a bottle of alcohol. Since I know you can't get alcohol out here, I suggest you get something like alcohol, namely good old drinking liquor. Oh, no, you don't, Cherokee. You're not going to get a drink that way or any other way. I'm not? Chad, you even treated those little lambs better than you treat me. Naturally. Naturally? Naturally. You want me to treat you like a hog. A hog, senor? Yes, a hog, Bilada. You see, Cherokee wants me to let him get a snoot. <laughs> 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 Frontier Town, starring Reed Hadley and featuring Wade Crosby, is a Bruce Ells production. Story and direction by Paul Franklin. Music written and played by Ivan Dittmar. Be sure to be with us again same time next week for another fine action-adventure story with your favorite young Western star, Reed Hadley. And now this is Bill Foreman to tell you that Frontier Town comes to you from Hollywood. <laughs>